I started Gold Sheets number 15 team with the tomahawk chop. I was going to start this video singing Rocky Top, but Chris behind the scenes helping me do these uh, laughed and said, no way is that going to make the video. So I'm just going to get right to it. Here is team number 16, Tennessee, and I am Ralph Michaels walking you through the Gold Sheet Top 25. We start every video with the odds to know what the expectations are. We look back at last year. We look at the 2024 team. We look at the schedule. And then we finish each and every video with Better's Edge. Anything you want added, folks, please comment below. Give us a thumbs up if you like the information we're sharing with you. If you'd like something changed, please let us know. We're happy to read each and every opinion, and we take each to heart. There's 163,000 people that are following Wager Talk TV. Now you know why. This video on July 17th, Tennessee, national championship odds 35 to 1. Conference championship 16 to 1. To make the playoffs, yes, plus 170. No, minus 225. Season win total sits at 8.5. Minus is 170. Yes, over is 170, excuse me. Under is plus 145. To go undefeated, you can get 10 to 1. But if you want to bet no to go undefeated, you have to lay 25 to 1. And their Heisman Trophy quarter, quarterback, Nico, is 18 to 1. I had to go and look at the pronunciations, guys. Lama at Alama Laliva is the way he pronounces it. So he is their quarterback. They're very excited about him. We'll talk about him more in just a minute. Looking back at the 2023 Tennessee Volunteers, they went nine and four, seven and six against the spread, six, six and one over under. They were a top 10 team in yards to play diff, finishing number nine, plus 1.51 yards per play. Yards per game offense and defense, number 19, number 33. Points per game offense and defense, number 35, number 22. Strength of schedule, number 43. And with that schedule and the efficiency ranks, they finish number 11 and number 15. Here's a stat that doesn't make sense, guys. Tennessee's rush offense last year was number nine in the country, averaging 205 yards per game. You would think that gives you a time of possession edge if you're going to run the ball and control the clock. How about this? They were number 120 in time of possession. Only 23 under 24 minutes per game. That surprises me. So they still run pace, even though they run the ball that much. They have been very, very penalty heavy the last two years. This past season, they were number 126 in penalties. And they were number 128 two years ago. So under Hypo, they may not have that discipline. Or perhaps he wants them to be aggressive. And he doesn't mind some of those penalties. Tennessee basically beat the crap out of the teams they should have. They got beat, the crap beat out of them against the teams they should. They only had two games finished within the eights. They did win both of those against Texas A&M. They trailed 10 to 7. A&M had the ball on their own one, but went three and out and then allowed a 39 punt return. A&M had the ball on their own one, couldn't move the ball. A&M had a 39-punt return TD, and then A&M's last four drives, first and 10 at the 11, field goal. First and 10 at the 37, field goal, and then interception, interception. So that is a game that could have gone either way. But again, Tennessee did win both of them. That's the reason they got to 9-4. and four. As we look at the 2024 team and look at the conference cheat sheet, you're very familiar with the SEC cheat sheet, but I'll tell you who's more familiar is the gold sheet. All of this data comes from the gold sheet summer guide. They have a summer schedule guide that's available right now at wagertalk.com. If you are a subscriber, you will get that information immediately when we release it, and you could save $30 off an annual subscription with the code GS30. That's GS30 saves $30. Gold Sheet starts week zero of college football, and you get it weekly through the Super Bowl. Head to goldsheet.com or wagertalk.com. Well, Tennessee, 
You see a 16 power rating number, 10 starters, five on offense, five on defense. Look at that returning production, guys, 108. If you're in the 100s, you need to be concerned. Quarterback returning, nope, they'll go with the young kid. Coaching staff intact and recruiting 13th in the country, 8th overall. And I've said this a few times on the videos, guys, think about it. If you are 13th in the country and you're 8th in your conference, that means only five, five non-SEC teams have been in the top 13 as far as recruiting goes. Shows you the strength of the SEC. Ten returning starters, obviously lower than each of the last few years. They have nine transfers. That's the lowest in the SEC. He did not go heavy on the transfers. He thinks he has enough depth. He thinks he has enough young players that he can count on to be back. They lost three players in the draft for this season. Totaled five points. Not much at all. The last two years, they lost five players for 23 points and five players for 13 points. So while the starters are down from what they're accustomed to the last few years, the players lost to the NFL draft is also less than the previous few years. You do lose Milton anytime you lose a quarterback that gets drafted. He was the number six draft choice to New England. And again, Lama Ea Lama Leva started the bowl game last year, a 31 10 win. Folks, they are excited about him. They wanted him to get action last year. He played in the opener, played in game two. Then they didn't want to burn his red shirt, so they, you know, they played him late couple games again until he started the bowl. So he has some experience. How he handles the pressure is always the case with a young quarterback. They do lose a thousand yard rusher who was a number four draft choice to Miami, but they have Samson back. He had 600 plus yards, seven TDs, and a 5.7 yards per carry. He'll need someone to help him share some of those carries. But again, if you say I lost a draft choice who was a thousand yard, it was a fourth round pick, they're in better shape than you might expect with that loss. The receivers, they lose a tight end and their top receiver. But again, they have a lot of depth in receivers. I'm not too worried about that position. O-line, they lose one full-time starter and two part-time starters. So let's call it two O-line lost. A little down from the previous year. The defense, again, you have five starters back, and it's on the negative side. They lost their top six tacklers, and they lost eight of their top ten. That means you don't have much experience back there, folks. The D-line, two full starters and one part-time starter, but not horrible. The linebackers, they lose three starters, but they do return a starter from 2022 who was injured. So he is expected to recover fully, and he's back. So let's call it they lose two starters on the linebackers. And DBs, well, it doesn't get much worse than this. They lost all four starters including a draft choice. So, uh, again, the DBs, the secondary is going to be the concern. You know, we'll see who they play early. In the first month of the season, they play NC State in a neutral game, and they play Oklahoma. Chattanooga's not going to be much of a concern, or is Kent State, but they will be tested at least twice in the first four games of the season. And I do want to give a shout-out to special teams coach Mike Eckler. This is a guy that I followed, and in the last three years – he has done a fantastic job. Tennessee has finished their average finish in special teams, number 14. Three, state, three straight top 20 finishes, and he'll have them there again, like he always does. Folks, if you're interested in personally in my football information, the college football and NFL early bird combos are up. It's only $777. I have at least three college football plays already loaded, including a 5%. You'll sign up now. You'll get those plays immediately, and you'll get each and every play moving forward as soon as I release them throughout the summer. The Tennessee schedule, number 42 as far as strength of schedule goes. Only one team has a bye before Tennessee faces them. That is way at the end of the year against UTEP, and I expect them to be a touchdown of almost five a favorite of almost five touchdowns. I want to bring up one interesting point. If you look at the schedule, you see one red mark. That is a dog of over eight of, of over eight and a half or more, and it's against Georgia. Many times in the year, 
If you were an SEC team and you got that first loss and you know you were kicked out of the SEC championship, the odds are you weren't going to make the playoffs. So a loss like Georgia, if they happened to be undefeated when they played them, if you lost to them, it would be a complete bubble burst. This year with the expanded playoffs, well, there's going to be three SEC teams. Hell, there could be four SEC teams to make the playoffs. So a loss is not the bubble burst that it's been in the past. We'll have to see how we interpret that moving forward. Arkansas, they have a bye before Arkansas on October the 5th. Arkansas, previous to this game, they're at Oklahoma State, they host UAB, and they're at Auburn, and they're at AM versus AM in Jerry World. That's a tough four game stretch while the other team is off a bye. And before Kentucky, they have a bye. Kentucky is off Vandy at Florida. Auburn, and then at Tennessee. Another great spot for the Volunteers in that role. Heading to Better's Edge, guys. Again, anything you'd like to see, comment below. Please smash that like button, give us a thumbs up, and make sure you are subscribed to Wager Talk TV. You will get team number 17. As soon as I load it, you'll get that notification and can follow along as we Progress through the top 25. Better's Edge, Tennessee went 7-6 and six against the spread last year. They were 7-3 and three as a favorite of three or more. They were 0-3 oh as a dog or a small favorite. Josh Heupel, again, was three years at UCF, his fourth year here. At Tennessee, 22-17 and 17 against the spread, 56.4%. And he's 23 and 15, 60.5% to the over. As a dog, he's gone three and eight as a dog. And as a favorite, he's gone 19 and nine. So if you combine those with Heupel at Tennessee, if you bet the favorite in every game, you have gone 27 and 12, 69.2% under Heupel. That's a strong number. If you include Memphis, he is 2-8 and eight as a dog of five or more, so they have not learned how to play well against when they are inferior opponents. And when I look over-unders, when Heupel is at home, he's gone 55% to the over. Excuse me, 61.5% to, uh, to the over. So at UCF and at Tennessee, when Heupel is at home, 24-15-1, 61.5% to the over. We're going to finish as always with our Better's Edge segment on actionable information from this team. Now, I normally don't like giving out best bets that are huge juice. Is it really handicapping to give out a 170 favorite? But I still feel there is value in this situation. I am looking at the over eight and a half wins for Tennessee. On their schedule, they're going to be a favorite of 12 or more in eight games. So I don't see them getting upset in any of those games. So those eight games gives us eight wins. I expect them to be a 20-point dog at Georgia. Let's count that as a loss. That has an eight and one. So there are three games left. They're a six-point favorite against NC State in a neutral setting. They're plus six against Oklahoma. And I expect them to be plus six against Alabama. Both Alabama and Oklahoma are the fifth game and the eighth game of the season. So there's time for a young quarterback to mature. The NC State game is the first game away from home, and it is game number two of the season. But watching him play in the bowl game last year, this young quarterback is poised enough to get those wins. So it's one of those situations. You know, in college, it's nice. You basically are only having to handicap three, four, or five games to look at your season win totals if it's worthy of a play or not. In this situation, I do. I am circling it. Tennessee, over eight and a half wins. A rare instance when I don't mind laying the minus 170. Folks, we made it through the first... 16 of the Gold Sheet Top Power Rated Teams. Subscribe to Wager Talk TV. 
And as soon as I load Team 17, you will find out immediately. To find out any of the top 15s, just check out the archives above on Wager Talk TV.